Hi guys, it's Belinda at Milpara Community House and we know that it's hard to connect with friends and family at the moment and there's some creative ways that you can do so. So we wanted to share with you one of those ways that you might not have known about that might be a great way for you to connect with your friends and family. Okay, so it's called Zoom. Uh, we're actually successfully using it at Milpara for a variety of our classes and uh, so people young and old are succeeding in using it really well. So we thought it'd be really worth sharing it with you just in case you would like to have a go at using it yourself. Zoom's actually free to sign up and you can have meetings for up to 40 minutes uh, using Zoom and it's gonna cost you nothing apart from your internet connection. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. I do have a screen set up in behind me. So if you see me looking up and down, it's just because I'm checking that you can see what I'm seeing. Okay, so right now I'm gonna share just simply the Google page. So basically to sign up to Zoom, just head up into your browser up the top, type in zoom.us and it's going to take you over to the Zoom page. And then you'll see over here in the top right hand corner is sign up, it's free. Click on that and basically just fill in the data and you will end up with a, uh, with a Zoom account. Okay, so once you've got a Zoom account, it's going to look a little bit different. It's going to look like, I'm going to show you my screen. Sorry, it's not the right one. That one we want to share. Okay, so once you've logged in, it's going to look a bit like this. Okay, so I can go to my meetings and you can see here I've already had a trial run meeting today. Um, but right now I want to create a new meeting. So what I'm going to do... Sorry, you can't see this, but I've got a head in the way. I'm going to move that again. Hit schedule a meeting. And we'll come up to here. So I'm going to create a meeting for my family tonight. So let's go with, let's call it family. Uh, you can put a description in there if you want to, but I don't need to. Let's put in a time. So let's make it, I don't know, 7 o'clock because lots of my friends and family have finished work by then and can come. Um, I'm just going to run it for an hour, so that's all fine. Let's go along here and have a look. Um, what I would suggest is generate automatically is a good option for security reasons. And if you'd like to, you can actually have a password on it. Um, so I'm just going to put in a password and I'm going to call mine grey. And that's the password that people will need to get in. Now, the other thing that we need to do down here is you can actually have the host video and participants video turned on. If your friends and family are not that tech savvy, it's probably helpful. It's nice and easy to use it that way. Um, and telephone and audio, um, it's best to click this setting. So if you've got someone who doesn't have a device that they can click in with visuals um, and they just want to use an old fashioned telephone, they can do that too. Um, down here, you can have enable before the host. That means if you're running late, everybody can be sitting in there waiting. And here is enable waiting room. Now, if you have that enabled, it means that you as the host will need to let people in once, once you've started your meeting. So you can click that off if you want, or you can have it on completely up to you. Once you've done, click save. And I've already set up a meeting for my family. Now all I need to do is send it to them. So you can see here it says copy the invitation and it looks like that so I can copy it and then what I can do is I can head over to my email account okay sorry I'm a little bit slow okay so now you should be able to see my email um, I've got a, I've opened an email so I would type in my family's email addresses in the two um, I would put a subject in, so family Zoom invite, so they know what it's for. And then all I need to do, because I say I can hit copy on the other page, I can hit paste, and it will paste the invitation that we saw earlier. Right, so a couple of important things that I think makes life much easier. You'll see here we have the, the link to the Zoom meeting. So if we click at the back end of that, 
just click on it. So the cursor is sitting there and hit return. It will make that into a hyperlink. And it's a hard way of doing that, but I just learned how to do that the easy way. So I'll share that. Uh, the other thing is we have a password for this one. So I'm going to highlight that because that's important information so people know what it is. And the other thing is, depending on how they're loading in, um, they might need the meeting ID. If they click through the link, they don't, but some people like to do things differently. So I'm just going to highlight that. And then I would just send that out to my family. The other thing you can do if you want to is um, you might prefer, maybe you're a Facebook person and you just want to send it through Facebook share that okay so this is my Facebook page all right and I'm going to click up here to create a new message and it pops down here and in there I'm just going to send it to my friend Milpara Community Garden for example and I can just right click again and hit paste and it's going to paste my meeting in and the person then when they receive that message they can just click on that and it's going to take them through to it. So it's really quite easy for people to use. Right, so um, what I wanted to do is show you a couple of little things that would happen in a meeting, okay, that are important, particularly if you've got people who aren't that tech savvy. Um, so here's some troubleshoots that I have found. The first one is if the person is on a phone, if they're holding it out here so they can see you, they can't hear you. Okay, unless they put it on speakerphone or drum themselves a headset, okay, and plug it on in. That's going to work really well. Okay, so you may have noticed we may have done a bit of a snap and edit. Um, I made a bit of it. Okay, it happens. So, what I am, I'm talking to you on my phone at the moment and I have put my laptop, Belinda, um, back into the waiting room because if you're hosting and you are using a waiting room, I wanted to show you how you get people out, okay, or how you put them in your meeting. And I also wanted to uh, show you a couple of top tips for when people do come in that I've found that have been common um, little hurdles that not insurmountable. Okay, so I've flipped you over and you can see, unfortunately you can see lots of me, but this is my desktop computer. When I wave my mouse on, you'll see an extra, you see down here, there's an extra thing. So my mouse has popped off, so I need to put my mouse back on and you can see it. Okay, so if I've got people, I need to click on manage people. And when I click on manage people, over on this side of my screen, it brings up um, everybody who's there. And so this person is waiting. So they're waiting in the waiting room. And all I need to do is click admit and then they would rejoin the meeting. I'm not going to do that because we'll make funky things with our sound um, at this moment. The other thing I wanted to point out to you guys is just over here. This is the important thing. And most people who have issues is because they haven't um, unmuted their phone. So that's mute. So no one will be able to hear me. Unmute it. People will be able to hear. Um, this computer that we, I'm on at the moment doesn't actually have a video camera. So that's why I just show up at the moment as like just a logo, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, but other than that, things are pretty good and you should be good to go. Uh, I guess at the end of our video, hopefully it edits up nicely. Uh, if you do have any questions, pop them in underneath and I'll try and keep an eye on it and hopefully we can get all the answers question questions answered and have you guys all zooming along as well. Okay, thanks very much. See you later.